podcast. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Boundless Business Podcast. We have a very special guest today, Sarah, from our content slash account manager slash she does everything. She's a wizard. Sarah, welcome to our show. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Well, we're so, so happy for you here. And as always, amazing Justine and Larissa are here as well. Team, what are we chatting about today? Today, we're going to talk about the difference between cold outbound, social media slash demand gen, and also paid advertising. So kind of separating the three, comparing and contrasting them, um, and just kind of going through the differences and the similarities and how they can all work together to get you more calls. Um, so that's why we wanted Sarah here because she works on both sides of things. So um, Sarah, do you just want to kind of introduce like what you do for Boundless first before we get yeah. into it? Yeah, sure. Um, so for Boundless, I do account management, which would be uh, going in with our clients and making sure that we are connecting to the right leads, making sure their LinkedIn accounts are good, um, that our copy and any campaign copy is, you know, not too salesy, it's personalized. Um, and then I also create content for clients. So stuff that they will put on their, you know, whatever platform it is, if they're, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, wherever their audience is. Like we said, she does everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely sees every part of our business for sure. Um, so let's start with cold outbound. So what are some different types of cold outbound strategies that we kind of use for our clients and other strategies that are out there? Anyone is welcome to answer this question, by the way, <laughs> whoever wants to. Yeah, I mean, um... Actually, Sarah has a very unique approach, uh, which is one of our one of our oldest products, actually, uh, in the Upwork world. So, like, I, I don't know, you you have a full range of experience, but Sarah, what what do what do you do? Like, I think you have LinkedIn, email, Upwork. Like, what what's going on? Yeah, so uh, we have a ton of cold outbound options. So, of course, there's LinkedIn, um, which is reaching out to you know maybe either people you have never met, which is truly cold, or, you know, people you haven't spoken to in a long time um, and doing some reconnecting with them. So those are ways to do that cold outbound. Um, Upwork, can you go, which is what you talked about, which is more, you know, people think Upwork and you think about um, like freelancing, but you can, you can get some clients and get lots of work from Upwork still you know, you turn that freelance platform into kind of a cold lead gen um, experience. And then email, which can be tough. You really have to make sure that you know your domain is good and that you're reaching out to people with verified emails. Um, and that needs to be super personalized in order to get into, you know, the inbox and from, moving over to the trash to really getting read as well with your emails. Um, but those are some of the ways we do cold outbound. And how do we decide like what platform and what strategy would be best for different clients? Like how, how do we decide that? How do we choose which of these would work best for you know, different types of clients and companies? It's certainly not a one size fits all. So like some things work better for some businesses than others. A lot of things to consider when going into this would be like, how much does your package or whatever sell for? Is it a one-time sale? Is it a recurring monthly sale? So it, it really does come down to like the client, who is their client? Like who, it, who is it that you're trying to reach out to? Because for example, Upwork can be really great for potentially either of those. So either recurring projects or one-time projects, but many of the recurring projects come from like, they work with you on a one-time project, they like you, and then they keep you as opposed to maybe, let's say you want to focus a lot more on like just recurring projects than cold email or LinkedIn may be better solely just because of like, those may be better places to find people 
that uh, are looking for like a long term solution to their problem, whereas something like Upwork can be a really great like introductory platform. Um, but it can work both ways. You do get like both kinds of contracts and things on Upwork as well. Uh, and there's definitely just so many different platforms to focus on. Like we mentioned the three that we primarily use, but there's so many more. You can do cold outbound on literally any platform. So like how you choose which platform to focus on is where the prospects are. Yeah, I can so, kind of echo that too. Like one thing is some platforms make a lot of sense for certain individuals, right? So like most people have email, but there are some industries that like you just can't email, right? So cold outreach to plumbers, for instance, might be better on a like cold call campaign than cold email or LinkedIn or something like that. Even though they have those, they check them, they're just much more responsive on other platforms. So just to echo it, like, even if they have that medium and they're active on it, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're always an ex, like a, a successful campaign to be launched on that platform. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think that kind of plays into like, before you even start reaching out to these people, doing your due diligence in the research phase and the data phase, like gathering data and claiming that data and really looking into that to help you decide which platform to, do, to use. Um, do you guys have anything to say about the data side before we move on? Data isn't as uh, intensive, I guess, for some platforms, depending on where you go, right? So Upwork, it's very like timely, right? If somebody posts a listing, you wanna respond to it within like 20 minutes if possible. If somebody, uh, if you're reaching out to people on LinkedIn, the data side is really important at that because you want to make sure that like you have all the people that you're reaching out to you already know that they're going to fit your qualifications before you send anything and then email data is also important as well and it requires additional like cleaning steps to make sure that like you're not reaching out to let's say people's personal emails or emails that may have changed like six months ago or uh you know there, there's an extra step of like verification and it's like that for every platform. So, you know, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Any platform has different varying levels of like data need and then like data cleaning need. And also, and this is super relevant is tracking, 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 tracking. We, you know, earlier this week had a conversation with someone where um, because there was lack of tracking in the, the process, you couldn't really see data move effortlessly throughout the whole campaign. So a campaign that looked really great or looked really bad, in this case, really bad, actually, when you dug into the numbers, was actually phenomenal, right? We're looking at a 10% book rate, which doesn't happen. Um, but if you're not looking at the data correctly and understanding how it flows, it's not just data quality that you want to care about. It's like, is data actually being presented the right way, good or bad, right? Um, but it's, better to know the outcome, what that data specifically does, than guess like, oh, this didn't work and without digging into the numbers. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what are some tips we have for, you know, just optimizing these cold outbound platforms and campaigns, like whether that's data optimization or anything, what are some of the tips we have for people who want to use cold outbound? to get more of a cleaning? Um, I think personalization is huge. Like it might take some extra time, especially, you know, when it comes to creating your messaging. But if you show them that you took that time to, you know, look into their, um, like their actual needs or something that they're interested in or a position that they've had open for a while. Um, it, it really does help start that conversation, which is what you want to do with people. And just brings a different like a level to it, right? Like if you're able to not just put someone's first name in there, like actually like, you know, that their intent, where their intent lies or where you could be helpful that goes so much further than like a mass market approach. Um, each has its different place, but 
and mass market, I just mean like shotgun approach rather than like the sniper one, um, which on this pod, we talk a lot about that. So focus on like really making it like make sense to that person. Yeah. The only thing I guess I would add to that is like all of these things are great, but you need to be able to have visibility into like every single piece of your campaign to really understand if it's working or not, because you can have awesome levels of personalization, really good targeting, but for whatever reason, like, let's just say your copy isn't connecting. You want to be able to know that and you want to be able to know like, oh, if I make this change on Wednesday, what impact does that have from that direct change? Like you want to be able to track things, not just how people move through your pipeline, but also like the changes you make, are they positive changes or negative changes? Because they're not always positive. Sometimes you make a change that you're like, oh, this is going to kill. This is going to be so great. And it sucks. And it just, it happens like that sometimes, but that's why being able to keep like a close eye on the data is so important. Yeah, and I think one thing too to note is that like this takes time too. So kind of be patient. Like you're not gonna see results right away, maybe. And you have to remember that things take time to build and grow. Yeah. Um, you so, reach out to somebody that it's two or three months before they, you know, book a call with you just because you know, they get busy and they see your message and they don't have time to respond. Or maybe, you know, you sent another follow-up that then they're finally like, oh yeah, I needed to get back to this person. Um, so yeah, it definitely takes time. Yeah, definitely that, fo that following up is very important. And also just staying visible um, on, you know, the platforms that you're using. So that kind of leads me into content and demand generation and keeping yourself visible on the internet. Um, so the content side is kind of different where you're kind of building yourself as an expert and just staying visible on those platforms like Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, um, and providing value wherever you can. So Sarah, what have you kind of learned throughout posting content and how important it is in helping your outbound campaigns? So, you know, the first thing people are going to do if they, you know, are interested in working with you is look into your company. Well, if they look at your company or even, you know, your personal pages and there's nothing there, well, I can say I'm an expert all day long, but where's that, you know, proof that backs it up? And that's really what your content is. Um, and posting, you know, current content, where your audience is, where you want people to see um, your content and making sure it's up to date, it's relevant, and you're posting consistently really help, you know, kind of boost your cold outbound because as people, you know, check into you and what you do, they're going to see that content and they're going to go, oh, this person really does know what they're talking about. Yeah, it's like, yeah, so don't tell me, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you definitely. really want to make sure that your content is in line with your brand and your brand message. Like they need to see your content. They need to see your website. They need to see all of the stuff and know that it's, you know, it's all related to one another. I think it is worth noting. And I mean, this is based on, you know, all of our client data that we see week in, week out, the people who are most active on the platform that they're doing that outreach on. And when I say active, I mean, they are posting, they do, they do like interact with other people, let's say maybe in groups or events or, uh, you know, any real way of like forming a community within a platform, the ones who are active on that platform, they're showing up, they're providing that expertise through like content itself, they always do best. Yeah, definitely. And it's also just like helpful in getting, you know, people interested in you who you might not be having a conversation with yet, but they see your content and then they want to start a conversation with you. So 
definitely helpful. So what are some tips we have for, you know, content strategies and just being consistent with this content and like how to choose your platform, how to target your customers on here, how to target your niche. Do we have any tips for that? I love uh, Sarah's point of view here because my, my message is always boring. Uh, who's your niche? What's the offer to them? Message and then sales, right? So Sarah, I'd like to hear your opinion because that's kind of my four models I always just live and die by. Well, you know, when it comes to content, you want to create things that, you know, make people stop scrolling. Like if you put content out there, but it's not eye-catching, um, people are just going to scroll by and they're never going to see it. Well, if they don't see your content, it's not doing you any good. Um, it's kind of one of those, you know, out of sight, out of mind, people aren't going to think about you. So definitely, you know, not you don't want to copy what other people are doing but what what makes your niche stop scrolling yeah what what do they want to see that will get them interested in you um so you know something you know kind of out of the ordinary but still get your message across um and you know if you're reaching out to people on linkedin but you only post on instagram you're gonna miss the mark. So making sure that your content is where the people you're talking to are. Um, it doesn't mean you can't post on Instagram, but you have to make sure that you're doing both. You know, your content is, it's like, it's kind of like working. If I show up to my job, but I don't produce anything, I'm not gonna get paid. And eventually I'm gonna get fired. But if I show up to work and I'm, you know, putting forth work that is good and gets results and people see it and they like it, well, you know, you're going to get promoted, you're going to get a raise, you're going to get all of these things. And that's really what your content is, is, you know, the work that you have to do to make your campaigns successful. I love that analogy. That's such a, like perfect description of what your content is supposed to do you know it's supposed to add value and solve solve your niche's problems really so that's awesome so do we want to move into kind of paid advertising and see how that one ties into all of these other strategies i know we don't really focus on it too much here at boundless but it is another option out there for people yeah, absolutely. So we don't uh, provide paid advertising. However, we do actually run a few ads for ourselves and, and we do have some experience in it. What we find it works really well is like ads are something that when you find something that works, it can be a little bit easier to scale it up. The hard thing is finding something that works and paid ads don't necessarily work for everybody because what you're doing is you're not necessarily showing that ad to everybody who meets, let's say every single one of your filters. So for example, if you only work with companies that uh, have a minimum of 50 employees, we'll just use that as like a really simple example. You can't filter that out with your ads. Like you're not going to be able to, that's a very specific filter. Typically it's going to do things by like, demographics and it depends on the ad platform you use so like you can do some some level of that but if you have requirements for leads that come from like let's say funding levels or number of employees or you want to make sure they have like a really specific job title or you have some sort of other like intent based data like let's say they're hiring you know those are all things that are really difficult to be successful with ads and also you want to consider like how do you want to build the rapport with those clients? Because depending on your product, it may be best for you to actually start a conversation and like have a conversation, transfer that into more of a call, as opposed to having something that like they have to initiate, usually sends them to like a form or a landing page or something like that. That just doesn't work for every type of client. So 
that's kind of like a big differentiator. Although all three of these things can work really well in conjunction, you can have really successful ad campaigns that can get you relatively low cost per lead. You're going to have to do some more qualification on the back end, but it can get you some levels of success there. You can pair that with content to make sure all of your, uh, basically everywhere that like your business shows up that you actually are showing up and that if people want to look into you more, whether it's based off your ad or your outbound campaigns, then they kind of are seeing that and they're like, oh, okay, this is credible. Like this person does feel like they know what they're talking about. Like they can solve my problem. And then usually those people will take further action. So whether that further action is from messaging you directly, going to a landing page, you know, going to any other like lead form type of thing, you know, that's where all of these outbound methods like go into. Yeah, definitely. They they can all work well together, but I think they can all also work separately based on what goals you're trying to accomplish. Um, and I think that's one thing people need to think about is like, what are you trying to get done with these strategies? So I don't think I have any other questions. Does anyone else have any closing thoughts or any other tips that I didn't cover or any other questions that I didn't ask? Um, no, I mean, it's awesome having Sarah here, like someone new, new fresh face perspective on the calls. I had a, I had a great time. So nothing on my side. Sarah, any closing thoughts? You know, I would just say like you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So don't be afraid to, you know, try new things, try a new campaign, try new content. Um, you know, if you don't know what to do, there are companies out there, oh, I don't know, like Boundless, um, <laughs> that are happy to help. So you can't, if you try something and it doesn't work, you're not any worse off than you were originally. But if you try something and it works, you never would have known if you didn't try. True. Test, 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 and then test a couple more times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. No, that's amazing. amazing. Well, guys, thank you so much. If you have any questions about anything we spoke about today, you got to get Sarah, thank you for being here. Justine, Larissa, always a pleasure. Uh, hosting this awesome show with you both and then let's keep rocking and rolling let's keep changing the world okay awesome bye guys <laughs>